Hello guys, so this is a tutorial for Unit 2 Startup. Yeah, so let's do it. Basically the first thing you want to do when you are starting up the reactor is disabling the offline cooling, uh, which is used only in the shutdown state. Yeah, so I will do it now. And once we do it, we can start uh, running up the reactor. Okay, so basically how we do it, uh, there's a procedure, uh, a real life procedure, which uh, requires us to pull the rods in a certain pattern. Uh, this pattern is designed to like balance it. And so the whole um, reactor is uh, heating up evenly on all parts. And that's how we do it. We just select the rod, which is blinking now. So we can do it, okay. Now we select the speed of uh, rods pulled, so we can switch it to fast. And you can start pulling the rods. So we are now pulling the single rod up to 20%. Uh, once we reach 20%, we select another rod which is blinking. And basically this is how we do it. Uh, if you want to pull it more than 20%, uh, rod block will like kick in. It will prevent you from doing this. So you can try just to pull it to the maximum one of the rods. And let's see what happens. And this is what happens. We get a signal and we cannot pull it any further. So this is how reactor works in the startup mode. You see there is a switch for this. So we will want to eventually change it into run mode, but we can do it only reach 5% of thermal power. Another important thing uh, which you need to uh, look at is the IPR, intermediate power range. So this is an indicator which you can see is now growing. And uh, this indicator has like eight levels, eight steps, which you need to increment. So once you move into the higher part, nearing the red line on the right, you will need to switch it to like next step. So now it's on step number one. And basically now at this moment, you want to switch it to step number two. And when you do it, the indicator drops back uh, to like lower indication. So, so this is how you do it. Uh, just don't do it too early because if you change to the higher position, the indicator might, dro might drop below the left red line and this will scram the reactor. So this is how you do it. So you are pulling the rods, monitoring the IPR, and when the IPR reaches higher level, you just switch to another step. So this step is basically what tells you what is the power now. The higher step, the higher the power. And you cannot see the thermal power of the reactor on the IPRM yet, because uh, it will kick in when we reach 1% of thermal power. So what we want to do in the meantime, uh, we want to prepare uh, rest of the systems for operation. So let's like open the bypass on the turbine. Uh, so Casper, if you want to do it, you can do it. So the bypass uh, is used to like bypass the turbine. Once we start producing steam, we want to direct the steam initially directly to the condenser. And this will more or less enable the cooling system. So now let's go to the condenser. On the condenser panel, what we can do now is enable both condenser air removal switches. They will initially drop the pressure in the condenser a little bit. 
not much. Later on, when the steam starts condensing, it will uh, lower the pressure naturally uh, for us. So we will see that in a moment. We also want to enable the cooling system by enabling all the pumps, uh, or at least pumps number one. So the proper way to do it is to enable the inlet first, like that. Once the inlet is on green, we can now enable the pump. And once the pump is on green, we can enable the outlet. So this is the feed water pump number one. We also want to enable the condenser pump. And as we don't have steam yet, there is no flow. Uh, so we don't have to do anything more with it. But we can also enable auto control at this stage. Uh, just to, like, we don't have to operate it manually. Because uh, this panel really requires an operator supervising it all the time. If you are doing it alone, just enable the auto control and it will take care of the panel for us. Okay, let's see the reactor. So at this moment, uh, we pulled all, all 24 rods. And when this happens, uh, all 24 rods are at 20% pulled. We will now pull them to 40%. So again, we are following the same pattern. Uh, pulling rods up to 40%. And uh, again, like incrementing the IPR to keep it uh, in limits. So another thing uh, which we want to monitor is the reactor period. Uh, so basically the period tells us how quickly the power is rising. And it tells us in how many seconds the power will triple. So now we have about 80 seconds. Uh, this is a pretty safe limit. Uh, okay, step number four on the IPR. Uh, if the time, if the reactor starts to drop, it nears like 30 seconds. Uh, this is the moment when you want to pull the rods slower, or you might even want to like stop for a moment and uh, just monitor the IPR and reactor period. You don't want to build the reactivity too quickly. So now we are on uh, medium rods speed. You can switch it to fast for a moment. Let's see what happens. If you're pulling it faster, obviously the time will drop. So now it's about 60 seconds. Back to medium. On medium, it should be a bit higher. But we are uh, actually approaching now this criticality region. So you see now, even on medium, the, the time was pretty low. So we switched to slow. And we are now pulling that slowly, maintaining about 60 seconds. That's OK. Uh, the level of the intermediate power range, now we have it at 4. This roughly gives you the power of the initial run up. So now we moved to 5. So we see the power is rising. Also, the, the indicator is rising. When we are up at about seven, this will be the moment that uh, we should start seeing the reactor power on the uh, on the indicator. Uh, it will come alive at about one percent of power, so we are still below.
to now almost all rods are pulled to 40%, uh, only the two in the middle are left. And uh, this will also depend on uh, factors like fuel remaining in the reactor. Okay, you can stop now because we are at 30 seconds. Okay, we want to stop for a moment here because yeah, 30 seconds, as you can see, when we stopped pulling rods and the time is almost constant, so so reactor is pretty much critical now. Uh, you might even want to push the rods back at some stage if, if you want to stop the power rise, because you see it's rising pretty quickly. We have to go to level 7 now on the IPR. And we also see thermal power now is about 2%. So yeah, this is this is the, the place we want to be. You might even want to, to push the rods back a little bit at this moment. To rise the time. Because we don't want to grow the power too quickly. And now in this region, uh, we are 3% of uh, power now, the temperature will start to rise. It's now 60 degrees centigrade. Once it reaches 100, we will start producing steam. Okay, the time is pretty high now, the, the period 150 seconds. So we can continue to pull the rod slowly. Now we have to monitor the time of the reactor because it will drop rapidly. So yeah, exactly, you stop here. And now we switch to level 8 of IPR. This is the last level. And uh, if you don't want to scram the reactor now, reaching the red line on the right, you will have to switch into the ramp mode. We can do it because we are over 5% of power. And now on the run mode, you can change the selector to all rods. You can continue pulling them all. And you can also enable auto balancer if you want. And also you can enable auto control of the reactor. So the temperature, temperature is now above 100 uh, degrees. Celsius, so we are producing steam. Uh, you can see that the reactor pressure will start rising. Uh, it is rising slowly because we are directing the steam through the bypass to the condenser. So now let's work with the condenser. We want to enable a steam ejector, at least one of them. Okay, and also on the cooling panel, we should enable all, all three preheaters. They will heat up the water going to the reactor. This will boost our efficiency and also one polisher, which will demineralize the water. Okay, back to the condenser panel. So the steam ejector will eject uh, all the gases that are uncondensable. And yeah, now we want to enable the condenser circulation pump. So this is a circuit that actually cools the steam down. So we want to open the valve to about 20% maybe. And we can observe how the condensing steam is contracting and doing that it's decreasing the pressure in the condenser. So let's see how is our reactor doing. We are aiming here at about 10% of power. Uh, don't go too low with the power because below 4% uh, the reactor would scram because we would be back to the startup mode. So, so now uh, we want to keep it around 10% and uh, this is a region where we also are facing this negative feedback from the reactor. This is due to temperature rising. So the rods have to be pulled from time to time constantly like to suppress this effect and keep us at 10% of power. So 
So on the condenser control, on the lower lower display, we have a zoom in. Uh, you can see that the needle is now in the region we want it. Uh, so this is the right level of vacuum that is needed for operation. So probably we can stay here uh, if you want to like decrease the pressure even more, you have to open the condenser valve more. And if the pressure is too low, you would like to close the condenser valve. And you can also at this stage enable auto control of the condenser. You just don't do it uh, before you have steam because uh, the auto control just uh, is not like intelligent enough. If there's no steam, it will try to open the valve to maximum without any effect. So now, once we have uh, vacuum at proper level, this is a moment when we can run up the turbine. So we start by the turning gear switch. And now we can start opening the turbine valve, initially to about 30%. And simultaneously, we should start closing the bypass. We don't need the bypass anymore, as now the steam is directed to the turbine. The turbine will start running up. Okay, this is... This is an alarm from from the director level. The auto control should handle this. Okay, it's now it's now okay. No, actually, it should work. It works in Unix too. Uh, maybe it just has to be restarted. Okay, now we are running up the turbine, so the more you open the turbine valve, the quicker it will accelerate, but also it will eat up the, the steam, so the pressure might drop, we don't want to do it too quickly. And we also have to maintain the reactor power at about 10%, this is the best uh, power to synchronize. Your goal is to reach uh, 3600 RPMs. So this is the place where you synchronize the turbine, but you also have to put the synchroscope needle on the top of the indicator. Uh, the needle is now crazy. This is because we are still pretty far away from our goal. But once we are nearing to, to the goal of 3600 RPMs, the needle will slow down. And if you are perfectly on the a spot, then the, the needle will stop. So when you are very close in RPMs to, to your goal, you want to switch to the precision valve. And the precision valve basically does the same as the turbine valve, but it does it slower. So now we are closing to the goal slowly. Uh, we want to really crawl very slowly to, to the goal because you will easily overshoot it. The turbine has like some lag between the inputs, uh, so yeah, you have to. Yeah. This really needs a bit of experience. So now you can see the synchroscope is rotating slowly. It means we are close, and there is a zoom in below the synchroscope, which uh, shows us uh, like the zoom into the region of the RPMs where we want to synchronize. So now operating the precision valve, we want to get as close to the center as possible, but not exactly to the to the center because we also want to rotate the synchroscope. So if we are a little below, the synchroscope will rotate anti-clockwise. If we are above, it will rotate clockwise. So we want to be just we want to be to be just a little bit off like now. And once the synchroscope is at the almost top position, we can switch the synchronize switches. We can do it now. Okay. Now the turbine is synchronized. Once we do it, we want to uh, 
like use the power from the generator to power our both main buses. So on the electric panel, we want to power up bus A and bus B. Okay, they are now pow powered up. And from this moment, we can use all of our pumps so we can enable them. So this will be also the second condenser circulation pump, second feed water pump and second condenser pump. Yeah, so if you want to do it properly, first inlet, then pump and then outlet and also condenser pump. And now we are basically set up. We can like try to meet the demand. So you can read the demand on the desk here on the monitor. So at this moment, demand is 830 megawatts. We want to go to about 80% of uh, reactor power. So we want to start pulling rods now, monitoring the reactor period. Uh, yeah, you can you can like constantly pull them. If you are doing it on slow, you should be pretty safe. You want to be something like that, 80 seconds, maybe 100 seconds. This is this is pretty slow, but it's okay. If you feel confident, you can go down to like 50 seconds. We are still pretty low power, so it's safe. But also at this uh, time, we have to monitor uh, our cooling circuit. Yes, the auto control align these levels perfectly, so it's okay. And also we want to monitor uh, the condenser uh, vacuum. So the, once the power grows, we also need to increase the condenser circulation flow to cool the steam because more power means more steam so the auto control is not handling this uh, correct so on this turbine panel yes we can also enable pressure hold now it's enabled this pressure hold will keep the pressure at desired level which is 7100 uh, kilopascals is it working correctly because yeah it seems that it overshoot a little bit but now the auto control will open the turbine valve just to uh, take more steam to lower the pressure. So it's, it's working correctly. And the last thing we want to set up is the deurator. So the deurator has an inlet and outlet valve, so we can start with the outlet valve. We want to open it to at least 50%, maybe a little more, we'll see it later. And the inlet valve will uh, inject steam to the deurator, which will heat up the water. We want to heat it up to 108 degrees. So now we overshoot a little bit. We want to close the inlet a little bit and just uh, stay in the limit. So the, if you if you played the game aerial, you will notice that the, the deurator was like reworked. It is now more challenging to operate. Uh, you will have to like correct these this settings from time to time, especially when you are changing power. So if you want, you can leave it a little below the limit, at about 100 degrees, it will grow once we are increasing the power. Okay, so we are now about 75 percent of power let's see how we are doing with our demand we are in demand at this moment uh, so we are producing 
860 megawatts and 820 is sent to the network. Almost 40 megawatts is used by our facility. So we know that about 73, maybe 75 percent of reactor power is the amount we need to keep us in the demand. So another thing which we can use is the reactor circulation control. So let me enable this. So these are the inlets, now the pumps, now the outlets. So the circulation control is another mean of changing the reactor power. When you increase the circulation, the power will grow because uh, the higher the circulation, the, the voids, the steam voids are then like suppressed. Uh, so uh, if you can like push the rods a little bit, so we go to the negative times, I will show how this works. Okay, you can push them even more, like to minus 100. Okay, now I will start opening the circulation and you can see that the reactor will start, uh, the reactor power should start increasing. The, okay, we are now at stable and we want to reach this 72% or something, so, so this, yeah, the time is dropping. Now, now I'm increasing the power, okay, let's stop here. Power is growing slowly. So, yeah, this is like a more precise way to change reactor power. I will now reduce the circulation. I want the time to go to infinity. This means that the reactor is stable. Okay, just a little less on both. Okay, when it's at infinity, the power is stable. We are at stable 75%. And let me just check again how are we doing with the demand. Yeah, we are perfectly in the demand. So from that stage, I would suggest to use only the circulation to make small adjustments to the power.